Friday, December 9th. Our readings today are Nehemiah 7 through 9, Psalm 140, and Revelation 7. So, in Nehemiah 7, we see godly people being gathered and placed in high position over Jerusalem. Then in verse 5, the writer says, God, it, God put it into my heart to assemble everyone for registration by families. And from there, we're given a record of all those in Israel, starting with the very first to return from exile. Chapter 8 describes this event on the first of the seventh month, where Ezra the priest read aloud the book of the law of Moses for this big assembly of all the people who could understand. In verse 3, it says, He read from daybreak till noon, and all the people listened attentively. Verse 5 says, As he opened the book, they all stood up. Verse 6, Ezra praised the Lord, the great God, and all the people lifted their hands and responded, Amen, Amen. Then they bowed down and worshipped the Lord with their faces to the ground. Notice this amazing reverence that people have for the word, this great respect and humility as it's presented to them. Verse 9 even says, They were weeping as they listened. Nehemiah told them in verse 10, Go and enjoy cho choice food and sweet drinks, and send some to those who have nothing prepared. This day is holy to our Lord. Do not grieve, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. And verse 12, Then all the people went away to eat and drink, to send portions of food, and to celebrate with great joy, because they now understood the words that had been made known to them. So chapter 9 starts with, a picture of the Israelites gathered, separate from foreigners, to confess their sins. In verse 5, the Levites begin this sort of speech for them all, a beautiful remembrance of God's glory and how he had always come through for them, knowing exactly what was needed. In all of their history, they recognized God's work. In verses 32 and 33, it says, Now therefore, our God, the great God, mighty and awesome, who keeps his covenant of love, do not let all this hardship seem trifling in your eyes. Verse 33, In all that has happened to us, you have remained righteous. You have acted faithfully, while we acted wickedly. And the chapter wraps up with them calling out to God because they're in distress, and together they seal an agreement. Psalm 140 shows David calling out to God for his own rescue. Verses 1 and 2 say, Rescue me, Lord, from evildoers. Protect me from the violent who's, who devise evil plans in their hearts and stir up war every day. Verses 7 and 8. Sovereign Lord, my strong deliverer, you shield my head in the day of battle. Do not grant the wicked their desires, Lord. Do not let their plans succeed. Verses 12 and 13. I know that the Lord secures justice for the poor and upholds the cause of the needy. Surely the righteous will praise your name and the upright will live in your presence. You can see some intense emotions from David in other verses from this chapter as he is eager for his foes to receive punishment. But we know the Lord gives grace for how our emotions can overtake us and God knows just how to respond to what is at the heart of our prayers. Praise him for that. Similar to the records of the Israelites in Nehemiah, Revelation chapter 7 shows us the important seal of those marked as God's servants. John writes in verses 9 and 10, After this I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne and before the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands. And they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne, and to the Lamb. <clears throat> then one of the elders tells John about those in white robes. He says in verse 14, These are they who have come out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore, they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple, and he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. Verse 17, For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. 
He will lead them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. That is the overwhelmingly beautiful future that we can look forward to once we've given our lives to Christ. No matter the hardships you may be facing right now, I pray that you're still able to take a moment and shift your focus to that picture of eternity. Friends, I look forward to the next time we gather and praise God and learn more about Him. But until then, you are sent.